Okay, everybody, I've come to this home to talk about soil compaction and thatch. Both of them have a very huge detrimental effect on our lawns and need to be taken care of. Now, soil compaction is caused by many different things, but what it is, is the movement of the mineral particles in the soil, the sand, silt, and clay, closer together and eliminating pore space in between them and shrinking the pore space. Now this pore space is very important because it allows for uh, moisture and rainfall to enter the ground and it also allows air to come in to the root zone allowing for our healthy plants. If Also if the uh, soil gets too compacted and too hard the grass cannot penetrate down into that soil so it no longer has a place to grow. So that's definitely something that we need to take care of. One of the ways that um, soil compaction happens is just, just a natural process. As the organic material in the soil breaks down, just rainfall alone can cause that soil to get closer and closer. Any kind of traffic over the surface of the soil can also cause compaction, and that can be just regular foot traffic, cars of course, even just the person mowing the lawn can cause soil compaction. The other thing that we're going to be talking about is thatch. Now thatch is a, product, a problem when portions of the grass that are resistant to breaking down build up in a thick layer down just above the soil, soil level around the crown of the grass. Now this causes all kinds of problems with um, diseases and pests, plus it creates this really strange zone that the plant tries to grow in only to find that it's not real. So. Thatch is uh, something that's really important and I see a huge amount of thatch problems uh, on some of the inspections I've gone on. This lawn here has got a very bad uh, thatch problem. Now you can see they've got a lot of dollar weeds and other things. I mean, too bad these aren't real dollars, right? But we can take care of that with an application of a selective herbicide later. But what we're going to do today is do a little correction on this lawn and that may actually help some of this dollar weed problem. Now, I'm going to talk about both of these together because they both are, you can detect them in the same way. One way to detect if you have thatch or compaction is just by walking around on the lawn. Like I said, this lawn has a pretty serious thatch buildup, so it feels like I'm walking a bunch of, on a bunch of pillows that are on top of the ground. It feels like I'm literally walking on a mattress as a kid. So it's very spongy and, um, disconnected feeling. Now compaction is the opposite of that. If you step off the sidewalk onto a heavily compacted soil, you won't notice the difference. It will feel just as hard as the concrete. So the other thing is, is that both of these can be taken care of in similar ways. Now soil compaction is best taken care of with core aeration, where you actually have this machine that runs over the top and it literally pokes down a tube and pulls out a plug of this hard compacted soil. Now it leaves that nice open hole down into the soil profile. So this is a good time for us to reintroduce some organic material down into that. Now thatch of course you can take care uh, with a machine that does this uh, vertical tilling which it goes in there and uh, like vertical mowing I'm sorry it goes in there and, and slices this kind of stuff up and breaks it all up. But you can also take care of this by just uh, putting some nice fill soil around here. So if you were going to do the dealing with some compaction, you'd go ahead and aerate the soil. Then you are going to do what I'm going to do next. Um, if you're dealing with this kind of thatch issue, I'm going to go ahead and, and put some fill on this and show you what I'm talking about. Now, one way to test for compaction is by taking like a screwdriver or something like that and trying to force it down into the soil. So this piece of metal, about a quarter inch wide, it goes down about, goes down fairly easily. It's, it's slightly compacted, but it's not something that I would be too worried about. It's a little softer here. So I really don't think we need to aerate today. So this is what I'm talking about with the thatch. See how uh, loose this is and and actually so a lot of times when there's thatch there will actually be a big layer of uh, this grass material I think a lot of them that is actually decayed but and 
and it's left the grass basically see, see how the whole section of grass is loose and because there's no good connectivity uh, it tends to make a lot of these runners on the top that just go everywhere and never make good contact with the soil so all we're going to do today is we're going to take a nice fine compost and sand mixture and we're going to put it over the surface and let it and rake it in so that it falls down between these pieces of grass and give it good contact so those roots can grow as soon as we have as soon as these stolons as soon as these stolons get a nice place to attach their roots they're going to start growing again so that's what we're going to do now this grass is still dormant from the winter it's not quite come back yet so it's not the best time to add any fertilizer if i were to be doing the fill in the during the growing season i would go ahead and add some fertilizer and any amendments that i wanted to either raise or lower the ph now when i'm talking about fine compost i'm talking about finely screened compost so that they pass it through a tighter mesh to remove any of the large particles now you can certainly buy a bulk soil from one of your local materials distributors it'd be a lot less expensive than buying it per bag but if you have a small yard or maybe you can't handle um, all that soil at one time this um, generic compost and manure is really perfect for the situation you can see it's very finely ground um, it has all these white little particles in there the sand and you can see that when it falls on the ground in amongst this thatch it just disappears and goes straight in so that's what we're going to be doing to this area here to try to get that down in there so that this contact grass has good contact and start and has a good foundation to grow in so just make yourself a few piles around the yard take your hard rake you're actually going to be using the the low side so you don't really want to tear up the yard too much you're just going to be using this to spread it around So when we're doing this, we really don't want to bury the blades of grass. We're actually just trying to get it to fall down and settle in around the base. Now you should never add more than four inches of soil over your grass at any single time. And if there were tree roots here that were in feeding this tree, you would never actually want to add more than two inches of soil. But this is just a little light top coating that's going to get down there and help us out so the homeowner is going to finish this up and do the rest of the lawn but you can see what's happening is that uh, this soil is falling down in there it's going to help build up that material and give us a good foundation now this lawn was neglected for a while so one application of the soil may not resolve the situation so you might have to come back later in the growing season and do this again now, if you keep up with this and add a little bit of organic material back to your soil every year or so, then you'll really won't have to deal with this kind of situation. So start making your own compost, get ready. The oak leaves are falling right now, so those are a perfect uh, material to collect. Put it in the side and make it compost. In the fall, you can use the hardwood leaves. But um, organic, the soil and the grass needs this organic material, and this is a good way to get it down in there.